Hello everyone, we are Maya Teresa Charlie Denise James Ash And our design think tank is Eco City System, future fitting urban habitats. Around 12,000 years ago, an agricultural revolution took place. The lifestyle of hunting and gathering transformed into one of agriculture and settlement. Over time, food sources became reliable and consistent. Gradually, people no longer required relocation and migration in search of food, and small settlements started to become established to build up villages and towns. The agricultural revolution paved the way for the industrial revolution, and the agricultural output grew faster than the population. The increase in food supply meant a rapid growth of population, especially in Britain. Aldersgate is one of the 25 wards of the City of London. The unprecedented destruction caused by the war was another factor in the rise of modern architecture. Most Western governments funded large-scale development projects during this time, such as the Barbican. Consumerism after the war grew exponentially along with food consumption and waste. This food system is currently unable to feed a population estimated to reach 10 billion by 2050. For more than 1,600 years, Aldersgate has been a key location on the big threshold of the City of London. Beginning life as a defended opening in the ancient Roman Wall, the gate has been subject to an intricate history of change. Aldersgate has been reshaped time and again by powerful forces of economy and the destructive forces of nature and man. However, each time these dramatic changes have provoked novel development and a natural evolution within the city. It is this passage of transformation that gives the city its vitality and authenticity, and it is a radical process that must be embraced to ensure the continuity of the City of London as a living urban environment. The site has many flat terraces providing ample opportunities for design. There are key connections to Moorgate, London Wall and even St Paul's. It's also one of the most green areas of the City of London. The site has been a testbed for future ways of living, such as the Rotunda, the Pedway Scheme and the Barbican. There are so many great views across the City of London and it's also supposed to be one of the most diverse areas in the city. Wow, this is not what we expected. This is not the lively part of London we researched. There are so many inactive facades. Even on the ground, there are hard surfaces everywhere. And are these the only trees? Also, where are all the bins? There's one. That's not good enough. There's nobody here. Maybe we should interview some locals. Since living here, I got asthma, actually. I'm not going to lie, all you see all is white, white people. Yeah. yeah. I don't really see a lot of ethnic people. No. You know what? Art is seriously people moving out closer to home. What can tackle the disconnect between humanity and the planet? Maybe growing is at the centre of it all. The cityscape does not provide enough space for conventional farming above ground. Exposing the growth process raises awareness of extensive time and care required to produce food. Involving the community in growing increases knowledge and appreciation of food resources. Awareness of resource intensity changes behaviours and consciousness while making choices and decisions. Increase in urban food growing relieves pressure on rural areas, allowing the rewilding to occur in previous farmland. We should work together to turn this part of the city into a future-fitted urban habitat. This is our manifesto. Value. Prioritise alternative values such as social, maintaining economic viability. Organisms. Strengthen the connection between humanity and the planet. Place making, reinvigorate a sense of place, building human scale connectivity. Omnidiversity, promote diversity across all spectra to increase resilience. Systems, restore our connections with and respectful of invisible systematic networks. Enjoyable active travel, make enjoyable and efficient travel routes. Microclimate, create a holistically healthy environment for creatures to flourish. Materiality, prioritise reclaimed, recycled and natural materials and adaptability to consider the whole life cycle of infrastructure and design for future use. Firstly, we remove the impenetrable surfaces. Then we add soil, nurture to grow and dissolve the existing structures, which are then retrofitted and adapted. People garden and care for the land. 
ultimately creating a network of connections in life. Most large buildings come with vast amounts of underground spaces mainly used for cars. What if these basements became large water tanks along with compost pits? The floors above would gain a mix between living and working and all the other areas would contain different levels of community growing. What if we took away some of the existing facades and added them elsewhere to create better usable spaces? A community like this thrives on nature and human connection. What did you do to my offices? We created a place that values quality of life as all beings above economic gain. The central rotunda has become a temple of growing that acts as a hotspot of biodiversity in the city. There is a new central timber structure as an ode to nature. The vacant Museum of London will be repurposed as the Museum of Growing. By radically altering the internal arrangement of the existing building, we propose that the creation of a layered complex of a variety of activity. 200 Aldersgate Gate has its facades eroded and rejuvenated, creating a more permeable building with areas of growth and views across London. Bastion House truly becomes a home for people, families centred around healthy growing practices, co-inhabiting the building with office workers and sharing the allotment spaces with each other. These spaces are connected by a series of cyclical systems that promote on-site collection and generation. The ultimate aim is to create a large green network across the city that evolves and transforms over time and even throughout the year. Let's not just cultivate crops, let's cultivate human minds, even those that thrived in the economically-led city that existed before us.